In this video, we'll familiarize ourselves with the parameters menu item. Learning how to make or edit models as well as how to interact with them in Squid 3. The goal of the model structure is to facilitate the sharing of data, but also to preserve the traceability of fixed values used in the calculations. There are three types of models, reference material, common lead, and physical constants, each of which contains sets of accepted values for that particular parameter. If you click on one of these, you open the SQUID Parameters Manager, and each of these types are accessible through the tabs at the top. We'll start by looking at the Reference Materials Model tab. From here, you can select a particular reference material model from the drop-down list. Here we have the five reference material models that came built in with SQUID 3. The tabs at the bottom contain the accepted values for this reference material, be they concentration information, the natural uranium abundance ratio, or the accepted or published dates, along with a comment tab that contains the citation. A reference material model might contain concentration values if it's homogeneous and commonly used to calculate concentrations in unknowns, or it might be blank. Common lead models, at a minimum, contain the five lead ratios. The other tabs containing data on correlations and covariances are blank, and that's fine. Remember that the common lead model is primarily used for you to select the common lead composition to use to correct your reference materials. You might also have common lead models that you'd like to apply to your unknowns. For example, at the GSC, we measured the common lead composition of our gold coat, and we often use that for the common lead correction of our unknowns. Regardless of the intended use, fixed common lead compositions can get a model. Finally, the physical constants tab takes the values used by SQUID3, for example, for the decay constants, atomic molar masses, and shows the references for those. Some of the other models available to you here are used by Earth time. The models that come preloaded with SQUID3 are not editable. However, you can make new models from scratch or edit copies of existing ones. So for example, make a new empty reference model. We'll give it a name. For shrimp data, we often use reference dates, not ratios. And if that's the case, for the new model you wish to make, you check this box here. Now you can go and enter your values. In this case, we'll do reference dates, and we'll call this model, we'll say its accepted age is 250 million years. Then we can save and register the current model. Now that we've made this model, we can go back to data, manage spots, reference materials, and it will be selected in our drop-down menu for us to choose. Now you may have noted there that I only put in the 638 age. SQUID3 informs us that it's making some assumptions about that, what that means for the 76 and 832 ages. And you'll see it's assuming they're the same and any assumptions that it makes shows up in red font here. The mechanism to make or edit models is the same, regardless of if it's a reference material, common lead, or physical constant model. In the case of these latter two, common lead and physical constants, you will want to go back to project, manage project, to select these new models if you wish to use them, or if you had edited an existing model, you want to refresh models with this button here in order to enact your changes. When you save and register a model, it's now available to you for future use. However, 
it's only available to you on the computer where you made the model because it's written to a .ser file and that file is saved on your local C drive in a subfolder under users and the user's name called squid3 user data. You have no choice in this matter. This is where it goes. And you'll see if you open that subfolder that it contains two .ser files. The model is not a standalone file in the user data folder. It's wrapped up in this .ser. If you want to make that model available to you on another computer, you can do it in one of two ways. You can open the original .squid file that used the new model on a different computer, and by simply opening that file, the model will be written to that .ser on the C drive of that new computer for future use. Now that, you might be thinking, is a bit of a pain and possibly confusing because you need to remember which .squid file used the model in question. And I agree with that. Instead, what you can, and I think should do, is export the model as an XML file. That way, it is a discrete, well-labeled item that you can easily track and find, and then import into a project whenever you need it. Some of you might be quite observant and notice in the folder where your .squid, uh, .jar file lives, there's a folder called Squid Theory Resources, and within that, a subfolder called Squid Parameter Models. Now, you might think, that's a great place. That's where I'm going to save my custom models. Well, it's not a good idea. This folder gets rewritten every time you launch Squid, so it's a much better idea to put your exported models in a separate folder. Depending how your lab works, there might be one person or computer workstation that manages the shrimp data reduction for the whole laboratory so that individual users can reduce their own data, but they're using tools like tasks and models that have been vetted by a super user. That's how we work here at the GSC. And so in order to make easily make a master package of models that's available to all users, regardless of what computer they're on, we have this menu item here, which is export all reference material models to a folder as .xml. This way, the vetted set of models can live in one place where the assorted users can go and get them for import when needed. Given some programmatic limitations, it's not possible to import all the models in one go. They would need to be imported one at a time. But users can do this without too much pain by simply importing the model that they need for that particular project when they need it, at which points it's registered to the .ser file on their computer so it's available in perpetuity. And then the next time they need a different model, they can import that one at that time. It is possible in your early days of experimentation with Squid3 that you make a bunch of junk models that you have registered to the .ser files, but are now just cluttering up your list. What you can do is export either individual models or all the models that you want to keep. So you don't need to worry about exporting the built-in ones. They'll always be there. So you'll export them to your folder, and then you'll go to your Squid3 user data folder and delete it. The next time you uh, launch Squid, it will recreate this folder and the built-in models will remain there. Then you can start importing just the ones that you want. You should be aware that a few other sticky things in Squid3, like your report templates, might also be registered in, that, in those .ser files. I have not 100% verified this. If you do, please make a comment uh, below the video. So it's always a good idea for those report templates to export them so that they're available to you 
later on if you need to re-import them.